My name is Idan Zuckerman. So I was a member of the founding team of a company called Rocket Play, which made uh, a social casino title called Rocket Play Casino, which was pretty successful. Got acquired uh, by a company called AGS back in 2015. And um, over the years, I've become more and more aware of uh, blockchain technology, especially as it relates to cryptocurrencies, as all of us uh, know it. But it wasn't until the coming out of the Ethereum blockchain and smart contract technology and with the subsequent innovations with dApps such as CryptoKitties that I started getting really excited about what this technology could mean to, uh, to the casual gaming space. And fast forward to about a year ago and with the coming out of the EOS blockchain, uh, my co-founders and I set on a mission to try and bring the benefits of blockchain technology to casual game audiences via, via gaming. And starting with Upland, which uh, we hope uh, is gonna be one of the one of the first games of its type to reach mass adoption. So um, Upland is a location-based virtual property trading game. People often describe it as Monopoly meets Pokemon Go. Um, and one of the questions we get asked most often is, why do you need blockchain? Why not just build this game with a standard backend like every other game? And the answer comes down to one simple sentence. But before I get to that sentence, uh, I want to walk you through some of the things that we're able to do today that were not possible before the emergence of blockchain technology. And for the sake of demonstration, let's imagine uh, a game where your objective is to grow a herd of adorable llamas. Maybe let's call it Llamaville. Uh, and as a llama herder in Llamaville, your single most prized digital possession is a llama. And other digital items may be your, you know, the virtual currency that runs the economy, llama coins and the facilities with which you grow and cultivate your herd, the ranch, whatever, it's, you get the drift. So back to th some of the things that um, uh, blockchain technology allows us to do. So the first and most important thing is blockchain allows us to give an instance to digital assets in the real world. And what does that mean? It means that I can now turn this, a virtual representation of a cute llama, and metaphorically speaking, turn it into this, a physical representation of a llama in the real world. And what is the difference between the two? So let me demonstrate. So imagine that I'm the operator of Llamaville. Now I'm gonna award you this cute llama. It's yours. Which means I just turned it over. And I'm gonna give you the virtual type of the llama, which means I will logically associate it on my servers with the user account that I've created for you. Now I'm gonna ask you both to dispose of the llama. Why? Who cares why? It's your stupid llama, right? <laughs> so you can think of a lot of ways to do that. You can you know, throw it in the garbage. You can donate it at Goodwill. You can light it up on fire. You, on the other hand, can't. And uh, to give another example, if I asked you to sell your llama to somebody in the audience, you would probably find somebody, negotiate a price, and then you would make the exchange. You'll get your five bucks. The other guy gets the llama. Now it's his. You, on the other hand, are stuck with your virtual llama. So this is a small demonstration of what true ownership means. And kind of like maybe to sum it up with a catchy phrase that I like to quote, if you can't sell it, you don't really own it. So back to our Llamaville example, blockchain will allow us to give an instance in the real world for all digital assets in the game, the llamas, the herd, the virtual coins, etc. And now that we have kind of like gave an instance to these digital assets in the real world. Another thing that uh, blockchain allows us is to create a ledger of record for all transactions that are associated with those digital assets, which is both public and secure at the same time. Now, on the micro level, this has some obvious benefits for players. But on the more macro level, this uh, creates a concept which is crucial for the bigger picture. And that concept is the concept of trust. So let's take an example, uh, virtual coins. So anyone who had the pleasure of running a casual game or any other game can probably relate to that. So when I used to run Social Casino, one of the most common complaints coming in from players was some kind of variation of, you took my coins. Where are my coins? My balance should be this and that. So blockchain, when implemented correctly to support an economy, can give the confidence to the players that nobody can touch their digital assets without their explicit permissions. So there is the potential here to make these uh, types of notions completely obsolete in our games. And going again back to the Llamaville example, our Llama herders can be confident that 
their llamas, their currency, their digital assets are fully secure, all of the transactions that have to do with those assets are public on a blockchain and are gonna be there. They're gonna be immortally notarized on the, on the ledger of record forever. And then the third very interesting thing that blockchain allows us is the frictionless and trustless exchange of value between peers. What does that mean? It means that any number of peers can either exchange or combine value together in a single transaction without having to expose their identity, without having to know the other peer's identity, and without having to expose any kind of payment methods. Now, imagine what kind of uh, innovation in gameplay this can create. Imagine game mechanics where people combine their value together to achieve a common goal. Imagine new business models where people set up virtual shops in the game or outside of the game to trade the digital goods. This could be very exciting. And then back to our Llamaville example, our llama herders, think about it, can maybe combine two herds to create uh, an offspring together and then sell that offspring to a third peer and then kind of like split the proceeds between themselves, all of that at touches of buttons. So very exciting stuff. And then back to the question of why did we want to implement blockchain when we developed Upland? And the answer was to create a credible, real-life game economy to support the game. And this type of real-world economy has a superior value proposition to the player when compared to traditional game economies, or let, should I say pseudo-economies, where the only peers in the economy are the single player and the operator, and we all know where this one's going. So this is, and by the way, these types of, uh, uh, this is all good and nice in theory. So it's been pitchy up until now. But we have to remember that blockchain as a consumer technology is still at its infancy. And this raises a few issues that together create a roadblock that stands between blockchain technology and mass adoption. And this roadblock is especially critical for casual games because as a casual game operator, you cannot afford to lose any user to friction. And if you were now to develop a casual game based on blockchain technology, you would have to invest a lot of efforts in things that fall roughly into three categories. So the first barrier is a user experience barrier. And this is probably the major one. And, and the, the first thing that comes to mind with blockchain when we're talking about UX barriers is identity on the blockchain. So if you look at all, if most if not all, uh, blockchain games that are out there today, so uh, in order for you to start playing the game, you would need, one, to have an identity on that blockchain. So let's say if it's Ethereum, you need the Ethereum account. B, you would need to probably store your private key for that account in a digital wallet that you have installed on one of your devices. C, you would need to have funded that account with a native token. So if it's Ethereum, it's Ether. And D, you would have to make sure that your wallet is compatible to whatever wallet the game developer has integrated with the game. Now, by this time, we've probably lost 99.9% .9 of our addressable market to friction, okay? Just because it's very hard to do those things and people are not gonna bother to do it when they wanna just play a casual game. So you have to figure out ways to overcome this. And the way that we overcame this barrier in Upland is by uh, creating our own proprietary wallet that is integrated into a smart client and it kind of like obfuscates all of the complexities of the technology behind that client, but while still adhering to the concepts of privacy and decentralization. So the user is left with a very familiar user experience uh, where he just needs to supply a username and a, and a password in order to log into the game. And that wallet follows him to uh, everywhere he goes. So, and obviously if you wanna run a casual game, you need to make sure that it's cross-platform, cross-device, with a mobile first mindset. Uh, in, if you ever want to compete with other casual games. And then another uh, very uh, problematic uh, friction point with blockchain technology is that if you want to um, uh, perform any transaction on the blockchain, you need to fund it. You need to compensate the computing power that runs that blockchain. Now, if the blockchain you are using is not requiring this type of compensation, it probably means that this is not a public blockchain and we are kind of like missing Missing the point. Now, think about this problem. 
Take a look at a very common casual game scenario. You go into the game and you want to collect your daily bonus award. So imagine if I had to collect now my 1,000 Llama coins or my 1,000 Upland coins, and I had to pay one cent, even one cent, just to fuel that transaction. That is a friction point that's a no-go. You will lose to any competitive casual games. Uh, so you have to overcome this barrier as well. And the way we do that, uh, we overcome this barrier in Upland, is by having adopted uh, the EOS blockchain. Now, EOS has a couple of very um, advanced uh, um, features. One of them is being able to delegate resources from one account to another. So we as Upland can create a, a kind of like an operational account on the blockchain and then delegate resources to all of our users. Uh, so by that way, we kind of like take a look at the blockchain costs, like such as any other costs that we run on, the, on our backend, let's say AWS or our stack of servers, et cetera, et cetera. And then we're able to incorporate all of this into our business model. So another thing uh, you need to overcome is, again, for, to create a successful casual game, you need to allow um, the, the, um, the flow of fiat money. Now, fiat is government issue currency, like US dollars or euros, as opposed to uh, blockchain tokens. So you, you have to be able uh, to offer users to, to cash into the game using fiat, and more importantly, cash out of the game, again, because we're dealing with real world economies. Now, this presents a, a little bit of a technical difficulty when speaking about blockchains, just because the way blockchain works, the exchange of value is performed via a native token. So if we're talking about Ethereum, it's via Ether. If we're talking about EOS, it's via the EOS token. Um, so to overcome that small technical problem, you have to probably create your own gateway that will allow fiat to flow into the blockchain and then uh, be taken out. But the more difficult uh, barrier here is a regulatory one. Uh, because if you want to operate in highly regulated markets such as the US, and if you're speaking about casual games, you obviously want to do that, um, uh, you have to adhere to regulations such as uh, anti laundry laundering rules and SEC regulation. Um, uh, and the way we overcome this barrier with Upland is um, by in, uh, in, uh, inflicting some uh, restrictions with our economy to make it compliant with those types of rules. So, for a small example, uh, the virtual currency that runs Upland is called Apex. Apex is uh, not tradable outside of the game. It's purely a utility token. So you could never take an Apex coin and exchange it for dollars. Uh, and these, it, we do that by uh, code implemented on the blockchain. Uh, however, with Apex, you can buy digital assets in the game, such as virtual properties, uh, and then you can go and trade those properties either uh, for the virtual currency or for fiat money. So there is a way for you to liquidate your digital assets. And then finally, um, real world economies uh, force you to kind of like rethink your free to play models. Because think about it, with a real life economy, every coin carries a value, every digital asset has a value and has a role in the bigger picture of the game. And if you look about casual games, like a pretty successful casual games would have D1 retention in the mid 40s or so. So that means that probably more than 50% of installs only get to experience one session and then they're out. And then you still have to hit those installs with the best value proposition you can offer uh, at that day zero. So that means give them bonus coins, let them experience the base game loops, let them experience the uh, kind of like the thrill of getting something and owning something. And if these people are not back the next day, you potentially have created a big hole in your economy that you can't recover. Uh, and the way we deal with this barrier in Upland is by distinguishing between visitors of Uplands and citizens of Upland. Now, citizens and visitors uh, experience Upland in the same exact way. They get the exact same gameplay with one small distinction. The uh, visitors to Upland work with blockchain accounts for which we as Upland still hold the private keys for. So that means they do not enjoy true ownership just yet. Now, if once a visitor starts playing the game, they are on path to uh, kind of like uh, be on one of two uh, potential outcomes. The first one, they become engaged uh, day after day, maybe at some point they monetize. At some point we deem them valuable to our economy, that's when they graduate to become citizens. By becoming citizens, behind the scenes, they're going to get their own EOS blockchain accounts, and they're going to get their own secured private keys, and we are going to lose access to the digital assets. 
On the other, day, on the other hand, if they lapse at, at, at any point before we deem them valuable, then we still have the option to recycle their assets and recover them back into the economy. So now that we've overcome these barriers, let's imagine a not too distant future where we have uh, two similar game offerings in terms of features and gameplay. So the first game runs a standard game stack at the back end and offers a pseudo economy with no true ownership for its players and without the option to trade assets or to liquidate them. On the other hand, we have a game that uh, utilizes a hybrid backend, which means it runs a real life economy with the support of blockchain technology. It gives true ownership experience to its, player, to its players and it offers the players to freely trade their assets or to liquidate them at any point. Now, as a consumer, which one of these games would you rather play? So I think the answer to this is pretty obvious. And uh, I think the next two years are going to be very exciting in this space. So watch this space. We're waiting for more of these games to come out. And I'm personally hugely excited about it. Uh, I want to thank you for your time this early morning. If you want to check out what we're up to uh, at this very early stage of Upland, uh, please go to upland.me and use access code, access code GAMEDAILY2019 uh, to access our closed beta. Do you, do you uh, require KYC for many of the users? Yes, in order to cash out uh, your proceeds, uh, you have to comply with uh, KYC requirements that have to do with anti-money anti laundering rules. Uh, the way we do it, we use the third parties that process it for us. So just because we're a lean startup at this point, uh, somebody else is gonna do that job for us. So somebody will need to hold your funds for your users, for your players. Uh, that somebody needs to have a money transmitter license in the U.S. in order to operate in the U.S. And then when people cash out uh, a, a value, I think it's over $600 per year or so, then they need to go through KYC compliance. Thank you again Thanks so much, Eden. It was a pleasure. Can we give Eden a round of applause? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.